You are watching the Doc Talk Show. So just like any disease, there are ways we can diagnose. Those are tests which are done to show that you have the disease and there are ways to treat it. So I want to know how exactly are blood vessel diseases <clears throat> diagnosed? Uh, Dr. Mombo, you can, you're the expert, so could you tell us exactly? Are there tests so, people do that you know, are misleading? When, when, when we are diagnosing blood vessel diseases, it's just like uh, we diagnose other conditions. Usually we would like the patient first to tell us um, the history and you, you would like to listen to the patient so that you can focus or narrow down on what exactly is the right, is the right diagnosis. Well, patients tend at times to run and say, oh, let me go and do an x-ray. And when they come, they tell you, I have a problem with my leg and this is the x-ray. And sometimes you wonder, why have you gone and done an x-ray? So we want to listen to the story. <coughs> The story gives us a very good background of what the problem may be. We want to know what you are. Are you diabetic? Do you smoke? What are the risk factors? Mm -hmm. Then we can say probably it is this type of blood vessel disease. So from taking your story, mm -hmm. we examine you. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things that we look at, or two of the key things are one, the blood pressure, mm -hmm. two, what we call the ankle brachial index. We compare the blood pressure in your legs to the one in the limbs, in the upper limbs, in the, in the arms. So you, take, you find a measure in the pressure, pressure in the legs? In the, in the, around the ankle. Okay. And, and then, then you compare it up here. Up here. Usually they should be about the same. Mm. Okay. But if the ratio is less than 0 0.9, okay, of the ankle to the, to, 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 to what? To the, to the, to the arms. Mm. Then we know something is reducing the blood flow in the legs. Mm. You see? So basically the, <coughs> the so, blood vessels are narrowing and reducing yes. the pressure. Yes, so that, that gives us an indication blood vessels may be narrowing. Probably it explains the pain in the legs. Probably it explains why he feels cramps and numbness in the legs. Okay. okay. Then we go ahead and do imaging. Okay, we will now start looking at things one by scanning. So when we do the Doppler scan, it can show us the size of the vessels. It may show us some of those fat plaques or if there's a clot, it will tell us how the blood is flowing through. If there is a narrow part, it will also tell us the, the sonographist or the radiologist they are doing it, the specialist in x-rays, will tell us and measure for us how narrow, whether blood is flowing well. If it's not, how is it flowing? Okay. For us who are on the surgery side, who Part of the treatment at times is, is surgery. <clears throat> we would like at times to know whether we can increase the blood flow through surgery or just through medicine. So we may go ahead and ask for a CT scan. CT scan is a computerized tomography. So we are doing like many x-rays with a special contrast or a dye in it to show the blood vessels. Okay. And this is computerized. Okay. So it's basically studying the network of the blood vessels. The network vessels of the blood vessels. Using a special dye. Exactly. So we do a CT angiogram. So we, we, we put a dye into the blood vessels. And using this computerized system, we can exactly delineate or outline the, the blood vessels. We can even reconstruct them in a 3D dimension, 3D mm -hmm. okay, images. And you can nicely look at the entire body and know how the blood vessels are. you can are. know which area of the, of the body has been affected. Exactly. Which one is dying. Which one, which is, one, which one be could be, why a part may be dying. And then we, as the blood vessels narrow or get blocked, other blood vessels start to grow. We call them collaterals. Or they are like a bypass, small bypasses to bypass the blocked place occur. So this CT scan, is very good at showing us these bypasses. Sometimes if the blockage occurred slowly, these bypasses have time to grow. Mm. And even though you have a block, you may not have very severe pain. Because they're growing and supplying they, the, Yeah, they are the enough blood. collateral. So you may find we don't need to operate you, but we need to improve your flow using medicine. So the people who get gangrene, they have failed to get those collaterals. The, yes, the collaterals have, the time to form the collaterals the hasn't been there. It, yes, the blockage was too fast, so the leg had no opportunity to form collaterals, mm. and so it dies off. It's very interesting how the body is. It can slowly try attempt to recover and regenerate itself, you know, yes. correct the defect which is taking place. But now, in terms of uh, treatment now, should, should we say 
everyone who has this arterial blood vessel disease, what is the treatment available? What treatments can they get? So we'll group the treatment into three types. We already talked about risk factors, things that can you know, predispose you to getting the, 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 the diseases of these vessels. So the first one is we need to modify our lifestyle. So in modifying our lifestyle, we say, oh, fine, one, what is your diet like? Can you make sure that your diet is a healthy diet, especially low in fat, low in sugars, low, fat, low, sugar. low sugars, okay? All right, and probably also low salt because we don't want very high pressures. High pressures will eventually cause our vessels to, to, to harden, okay? Then secondly, avoid smoking. We do not... Smoking is very dangerous for our bodies, very bad for our blood vessels. And if you can avoid smoking, that is very good. Avoid sedentary life. Life which you know you simply sit there full time, you don't want to move to do anything, and as a result you start putting on weight, growing fat. So we want you to be active. Even in being active, even when you have got the disease, if you do a regular exercise, okay, it is good for improving the flow. It even helps those <coughs> collateral vessels to develop even the more. So but even, even if they are feeling pain, but they still should they, they should, should do, do some, some exercises okay. to a certain level. But we encourage you to do some exercise, to do some walking, especially. I don't expect you to jog because if you start jogging, it will be very very painful. So, so some some degree of exercise. some degree of exercise, mm. and you should slowly by slowly increase that amount of exercise. It is good to improve the the blood flow. Then we give drugs also which help in dilating the blood vessels. Mm. Some of these to drugs, like amlodipine, nifedipine, these are calcium channel blockers. They help us to dilate the, the blood vessels peripherally. So we also give small doses if you're not a hypertensive. If you're a patient who has got high blood pressure also, then, and you're already on them, then we maintain, um, we maintain those drugs. Mm. And then we give you a drug to keep your fat levels down. Because should fat levels continue building up and blocking your arteries, then you're in problems. So we give you what we call statins. These are drugs that will keep the fat levels low and give you chance to develop your collaterals and at the same time entirely slow down the entire disease process. So that is, That's if you came in drugs. early, and we see the process starting, we can institute those measures. Change your lifestyle and put you on what? On statins. Now there are those who come very, a little late or very late. When the pain is so much, the drugs can't make drastic changes. Mm, they take time to work. Yes. To change the process. We need to do something because you are likely to lose your limb, as we say, that your limb or your leg is threatened. So, we need surgery. And in surgery, what we'll do, we can put in wires and put a small, if it's a small, short blocked area, put in a small wire stent and open up mm, the blood so vessel. It's kind of like unblocking the blood. You're like unblocking it. You can even remove the clot okay. and unblock it. Are those procedures done in Uganda? Yes, these procedures can be done at the Heart Institute. Okay. We, there are those who come with a sudden blockage of the artery with a big clot. Again, for these ones, it's an emergency. Usually we want that if you get that sharp pain and your leg becomes cold, it becomes painful, there is no pulse in it, you should come to the hospital within six hours. So six hours is the window, is to, the save window the, to, to, really save the, to save the leg. To have a good result, yes. Mm. And we remove that clot. I think it's the same thing also for strokes. There are certain types of strokes where the window, from the time recognize things are going bad, there's that window of opportunity. It's usually about four to six hours. Beyond that, it may be a bit too late to save the situation. I think that's the same for the legs. So these six hours are very, very important. Some people come to us after two days. And, well, we've saved some, but the outcome is not so good because you have to do many other things 
that keep the patient very long in the hospital. So when you come when the leg or the limb or the organ has already started dying off, it has become gangrenous. Mm, it it's become, become black. black. You know, shrunken, dried, it's dead. You can't feel it even. We have no choice but usually to cut off that part of the body or to amputate if it is the case of a limb. But I want to talk to the viewers. Many times we get these patients coming in and they say he was bewitched. And we have had patients who request to first go and see the witch doctor. When we tell them this leg is dead, we need to cut it off and we cannot salvage it. There is no return. It's gone. And they say, no, no, no. Let's first try the witch doctors. And then they come back when things are even worse. Because a dead tissue on the body is a very good home for bacteria. And when bacteria enter that dead leg and have access to the rest of your blood, then you get a, system, a situation of bacteremia or even worse, septicemia, mm. which can kill. That is... In other words, that's overwhelming infection. Overwhelming. That dead part of the body will keep so many germs which have access to the rest of the body and basically it becomes a source, like a nice a kind of like a port for the germs and they're just feeding into the blood, into the blood. So we would like to encourage our patients that when you develop gangrene, when that limb has turned black, you no longer can feel it, please get it off as soon as possible. This will help you improve the quality of your life. It will also prevent you from getting infections which could actually kill you. So this, this is our appeal. But above all is that blood vessel diseases are on the increase. We need to change our lifestyle to prevent, uh, to protect ourselves from getting these um, diseases of the blood vessels because they just just as the heart suffers so does so do the blood vessels mm. from the same conditions almost so it's important that you change your lifestyle and secondly that should you have any symptoms mm. like what we've talked about even your buttocks have big muscles as you walk they can start paining as you walk and you wonder but what is happening nobody has hit me but I'm having pain mm. So in that situation, you're having what we call gluteal claudication. Cramps within the buttocks. Because of the blood vessels. Yes. So blood vessel diseases are very, are very serious and very important. And we need to address them as quickly as possible. Okay. So you've heard it from the expert, Dr. Mwambo, who is a senior consultant cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon working at the Uganda Heart Institute telling us about diseases of the blood vessels. You've learned about the risk factors, things like smoking, diabetes, uh, obesity or too much weight can directly injure the blood vessels and result in disastrous consequences such as having a dead part of the body which is called gangrene and which requires amputation or cutting off the limb. So take this, um, this information very, very seriously because as we all know, as the saying goes, prevention is always better than cure. You don't want to reach the stage of attempting to cure a nearly gangrenous leg because that is not something which is quite desirable. It's quite, it, I imagine it's quite an expensive procedure and if you have any delays, you may end up losing that part of the body. It's not only the legs that are affected, it can affect the kidney, it can affect your intestines, even worse still, it can affect the heart and you get a heart attack or maybe you get a stroke when it goes to the brain. So let's heed the message and I'd make sure we live healthy lifestyles. You do enough exercise, eat healthy diets, avoid smoking at all costs, because these are the things which we do on a daily that end up taking our lives. We end up destroying our bodies, yet we could have avoided it in the first place. So I want to thank you very much, Dr. Mambo, for taking the time to come and address the public. And if you have any questions regarding blood vessel diseases or diseases of the heart, you know, pressure or the likes, 
please send it to our social media platforms. We will connect you to our experts and they will happily answer all the questions. For now, we wish you a good night and goodbye. The Dog Talk Show.